Hey everybody, this is David Watts again. Today I'm going to show y'all another Tnet 3 tutorial on how to get at least simple server-side communication going. Because the way it's set up, it's not exactly server-side with how some things are. Like, the, um, the first player to join is technically the host of the room of the server, but I don't need that for my case. So I'm trying to make the server control everything that goes on in the game. And I'm going to go ahead and show y'all how to at least get the simple parts of that done. It's taken me a few days to figure this out because I had to learn the system that for the dedicated server. So, alright, let's get into it. As you can see right here, we got our server loaded. I'm not going to get into the map rotations and stuff right now. I'll do that in um, another tutorial. But as you can see, I got stuff loaded, stuff like that. Okay. Now, as you can see, server's on. Let me go ahead and just minimize that for now. And this will be the debug log right here we'll get. It's probably about to re refresh because I just saved a, um, a script. But I'll go ahead and show you all anyways. Okay, cool. It didn't delete it. Okay. This is the standard Tnet stuff right here, this one. These two are going to be local client side, and I'll just go ahead and show you all that in just a second. But this right here is the actual message from the server. We're just requesting a server name. It was just, I thought that was a really good example to give y'all. And that's just a disconnect message. Okay. Now, I got two instances of Visual Studio, one for the dedicated server and one for the game. Okay. Now this is just a test script I made. It just has the channel ID, which I just put a default zero because that's where it starts off, I believe. But anyways, we, we set up a game client, which equals our current client from the TN manager inside Unity. So remember, this is the Unity side for your game. And I um, inside game client, I call request validation, which is this script right here. Remember, there's two debugs I told you we were local. Right here and right here. Okay, so what we're doing, if we're connected, which in my case I know for a fact I am, I'm just trying to keep it in a way that maybe y'all can, you know, perhaps just do not connected, you know, or something. Okay, so we're creating a variable called writer, which equals begin send, which as you can see right here, it says begin sending a new packet to the server. And now, this is the only customization I had to really do is the packet request server name. So you go to TN packet and just put this right here. And it's just a way to send a message and be able to relate information back and forth. It's pretty simple once you see how it works. All right. So that's all we did. We just add any commands we want to send, you know, request server name. Okay, we'll send the server name. I go back to this. Then we do write or write and um. I can't exactly figure out if this is really required. I think this is if you want to do like an if statement. Because um, I'm not actually asking for a message on the server side. So this might just be if you want to do an if statement or, you know, a message in general. So it's probably good to put an if statement in the server and, you know, a message that way you can verify. And in send, this is the last part. In send, it says send the outgoing buffer. So pretty much what it's doing is gathering the channel ID that we sent from test to channel ID. And um, uh, I think true means, um, what you call it, TCP connection. <laughs> so we'll do in send just to make sure. I want to make sure I tell you all the right thing. Yeah, reliable. Yeah, reliable means the TCP. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and save that just in case. All right, now, there's one more thing we need to do. This is very important. Now, if we want to, actually, let me go to the server first. Yeah, let me go to server. Okay. All right, this is part right here. This is the case I had to make inside the TN game server for the dedicated server. Okay. Now, it says right here, console write lines, that's the message, word. At this player's asking the request for the player, not player, but the server's name. And we just output it in the console. That way we know if it works or not. Now, this is on the dedicated server, not the client. So, now we do a writer, which is player begin send. Remember that. Begin sending a new packet to the server. And then we just do the packet, the same exact thing. Request server name. 
okay and we just write it out the WHD settings that's just my um, a namespace and all that I use but you can put a string in general and then you put server name player dot send okay player dot send is the most important part you need to remember otherwise it's not going to send it to the player okay now that's the part that took me a while to figure out I finally just went down and just looked <laughs> but yeah it's, it's actually really simple now that's pretty much it I mean I have all this extra stuff open that I didn't need to end up opening but I was trying to learn the system okay so as you can see we got player in send now let me go ahead and save that okay now let's go back to the game now here's the same as I think we're going to go to the packet area for it so we'll just just type in switch just that way I can just hit next okay now this is really simple request server name right here that's my little switch statement when the server responds back to us it's gonna read this information right here because we're using this enum request server name okay so now we just set up a temporary variable called s name because it was my test and now this is the everything with the whole um the way you can relate information so for example let's go to var and we'll just type in temp for example and we say equals reader and now here's the cool part read you can set up different things like bytes characters ints doubles so you can you know make your information be readable between both parties so you can send all kinds of cool stuff so in my case I just did a read string because that's the message I'm receiving and I put server name is s name and we break out so let's go ahead and do a test I already got the server running it's right here okay now let's go ahead and hit clear this out and the players and request a server name is an output it player request server name validated my server okay and guess what here's our message right here but yeah I thought that was really cool and I know this is very important for a lot of games server-side communication that the server has the authority so yeah um, if y'all have any questions just feel free to ask and y'all take care and have a good night bye